Okay. Uh, so okay, I got started. Um, so um, hello everybody. Uh, thanks for taking the time to um, thanks for taking the time to listen to me today and watch for a presentation. My name is uh, Paul Keneally, and uh, I am a creative digital media designer in the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning at uh, Munster Technological University. Uh, we're a newly formed university. Before that, we were called the uh, um, Cork Institute of Technology. Uh, so to start and to introduce our project, um, myself and a bunch of uh, very passionate partners who are uh, archivists from, um, from Spain, uh, Portugal, Norway, Austria, um, Hungary, and Malta uh, are working on a project called uh, Digital Treasures. And um, some of the and some of the main objectives of the project is uh, the first is develop uh, modern practices. Uh, to engage the EU general public about uh, subjects like archival restoration and um, and preservation, and also introduce uh, younger audiences like children, teenagers, and uh, and digital natives alike uh, into uh, into these uh, processes uh, and methodologies. And then the third one then is uh, one of our main objectives, and that's to host uh, three exhibitions across uh, six EU countries. Uh, so it's all the partner countries uh, except for Ireland, and uh, those exhibitions uh, uh, consist of three teams, which is uh, the construction of Europe, exiles, migratory flows, and solidarity, and uh, European discoveries and uh, new world technologies. So um, the, the process and the methodology that we use to develop uh, all of these outputs for the project is ADI. So we choose to use this over things like um, and for the uh, D school, or else uh, more agile traditional development associated with game design, uh, because uh, the analyze phase uh, complements the application phase, and uh, the evaluation phase actually really complements the um, complements the reporting phase at the end of a project, and then um, everything in between then uh, covers uh, our phase, which is uh, which is the development. Um, Sorry, uh, I'm just going to mute everybody there, guys. I'm just hearing some breathing. Um, so, uh, so through that, then uh, we develop um, a combination of uh, exhibition outputs, which we'll be covering today, as well as um, online outputs. And uh, also, uh, we won't be covering today, but I just want to give some uh, credit to. Um, Christina Pinko, a very talented graphic designer, who's been working on our digital catalogs as well as uh, an online uh, literacy course. So, so um, the first thing we'll be talking about is, uh, you know, the furniture that we'll be used in the exhibition. So, key piece of furniture, and uh, the first one is going to be uh, these touchscreen cabinets. So, we came up with the idea of touchscreen cabinets by using. Uh, uh, 27 inch uh, touchscreen monitors that support 10 point touch, and these will be powered by uh, mini PCs. These will also be modular, so depending on the various designs and venues partners have, these cabinets can then be uh, moved around the venue. Uh, first, one of those outputs then uh, that we'll be using are uh, touchscreen quizzes. So um, we purchased the Unity template, and then we uh, took content in the form of questions from all the partners. And um, we created a set of questions. So there's going to be three sets of questions, three sets of questions for each exhibition. They'll be translated into each partner's language. It, uh, it, the objective of the game then is to achieve as high a score possible as answering as many uh, questions in the time given and uh, the number of lives you have. The next um, output then that we'll be talking about then as well is our touchscreen uh, pairs game. So the way it works is again. We've taken, uh, we've created sets of um, images, uh, so over 100 images of, uh, from archival documents, and um, and the objective of that game then is you have to match the pair. So it starts with two, it increases to four, eight, sixteen, and so on, exponentially again to achieve a high score. And again, that was created using Unity. Uh, the notable thing then about these two games is that uh, because of the 10-point touchscreen. And uh, we, we actually took uh, all age all age groups into mind, so both senior citizens, uh, children, and uh, adults in between. And uh, these type of uh, games and interactions um, will invite um, 
it will allow multi-touch capability and allow multiple people to interact and have shared experiences at the same time. Uh, then the second key piece of furniture that we have will be um, these, uh, what we call the uh, AR document panels. So each exhibition will have three to four document panels at the exhibition. And uh, these particular document panels then uh, will have uh, AR interactivity embedded into them. So we'll be using um, an AR service called Artivive. And visitors then can uh, scan uh, a document. So either on a tablet provided or on a smartphone, um, more likely a smartphone now given um, recent develop development in the last year because of COVID-19. And you can scan these to, to activate these interactive events. Some notable examples then of these uh, interactive events are um, the first one, uh, just a notable one here, is um, a biography of a famous Hungarian composer, Soldan Kodali, and that's activated by scanning a photo. And the other notable one then is um, this one here. So uh, it's about a, a shipwreck corsair called uh, Pietro Stellini, and it actually uh, shows uh, a contrast or a juxtaposition of the experiences that um, that uh, 18th century sailors and refugees today experience uh, when trying to cross uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Um, uh, I'm very sorry as well. I, I got my slides mixed up. My third, um, the third uh, game then that will be on the game cabinets is this Infinite Runner. So we're working uh, with a gentleman called Matt from Hex Studios, who's a very talented game designer who we worked on on previous EU projects. And uh, the idea behind this game is there's no educational aspect, but it's a fun to play game that's uh, very similar to the style of a uh, temple run, where players can swipe left or right to duck, dive, and uh, jump uh, to achieve as high a score as possible. And then depending on the exhibition team, uh, you know, um, the players will be playing in a lab or a work environment, uh, an immigration ship, and uh, the third one then is um, uh, a tower of Babel era kind of village or a bazaar. So the next thing then that we'll um, quickly cover is uh, our edutainment app. So uh, this is aimed at teens and uh, it includes our entire digital catalog. So that's over 150 uh, documents. We developed this then using a platform called uh, Evolve, and uh, it allows us to make a, a HTML5 based web app that uh, is a device responsive. So it can be played on tablet, phone, or PC. Uh, another part of this app then as well is that we track uh, the user's progress and we award them then for things like um, uh, sections that they complete, uh, questions that they get right, and overall 100% uh, completion of the game. And again, the progress is cached in uh, the user's browser. So uh, um, users can return, come and go uh, anytime as they wish. And then uh, last but not least is uh, our RPG game. So uh, the development team uh, for this uh, narrative driven game consisted of um, our subject matter experts who are archivists and myself um, in a, a designer in a Munster Technological University. And uh, we started this process, um, uh, like all processes, by, by brainstorming. So um, we had a meeting, we shared ideas, and we came up with ideas for uh, the learning objectives, the learning outcomes, and the potential game scenarios to facilitate these learning outcomes. And, um, and uh, fortunately enough, all partners had very similar ideas. And uh, two of the outlying themes uh, revolved around uh, discovering archival documents and uh, restoring archival documents. So based on that, uh, we proposed um, an idea to use uh, a school and national archives as the virtual environments to facilitate these, um, facilitate these um, game objectives and opportunities. And uh, from that then, we actually uh, quickly produced um, a pre-game, uh, a pre-alpha demo for partners to play, along with a very detailed uh, story outline document which lists uh, the different types of interactions, events, and uh, occurrences that will happen in the final version of the game. Once we were happy with that, then we moved on to the script. And uh, based on experience from re recent projects, 
we actually moved our scripts to Excel and Google Sheets because um, it saves time formatting and it also facilitates uh, translation and opportunities for more minute feedback uh, later on in the process. Then once partners were happy with the script, uh, we moved on to the production of um, a very functional uh, version of a game alpha. So uh, when it came to making the storyline, we actually took um, children and our younger audiences' potential uh, cognitive load into account. So because they're not uh, because they're not mature enough, we decided to go with a, a structural narrative approach. Uh, what that means is that um, we brought the game into two levels, uh, which are episodic. So it consists of um, an introduction. Um, uh, how do you say, uh, a call to action or a disruptive uh, moment, a climax and uh, a conclusion. So, and, and this occurs on both levels. Again, because it's episodic, um, the final game uh, currently works out to be 40 minutes to one hour. So depending on um, uh, the player's time, they will be able to be able to play this game uh, in two sittings if it's required. Um, and then to give you a summary of the game, so. Uh, you play as a character called Tom, or depending on what language you played in, Tom's name will be a slight variation. And uh, he's a school student being asked, along with his classmates, to uh, help uh, clean out an old um, school building before it becomes uh, demolished and a uh, new takes place. While there, the students meet uh, an archival expert, uh, so who acts as a mentor. And uh, they help Tom and the students um, identify all the different types of documents so um, photos, uh, photos, manuscripts, drawings, et cetera, all, all pieces that constitute as an archival document. And then eventually, um, through a happening of events, Tom the main character locates uh, what we call a MacGuffin document. Uh, so uh, a MacGuffin for us is uh, a document which uh, is kind of history altering. And depending on the language that you eventually play it in, um, that will be significant to each partner's um, respective country. So, and as a thank you uh, from the archival expert, uh, Tom, he gets invited to level two, where uh, he goes to see how um, the game document then is uh, restored. And while there then, uh, before the MacGuffin document, so the main historically important document gets restored, he must help the archival staff uh, restore documents uh, along the way. So uh, th these ones then take inspiration from real world tax tasks. So like um, creating, um, so reconstructing documents, uh, moving documents around uh, the building to more hospitable climates, and also um, a little grievance that uh, a lot of our archivist partners have, which is fighting off uh, little microscopic bugs. Uh, also, just to give you an idea of scale, uh, so here is uh, what level two looks like, and then this will be, the actual size of the game window. So um, it, it, it's, it's quite fast. Uh, uh, the game engine that we decided to use then was um, RPG Maker MV. The reason we chose to use this over um, likes of a more mainstream engine like Unity or, or even UE4 is that because um, it had a lot of out of the box functionality. So it had a quick ability to produce demos and uh, it also had um, it also gave us the ability to use configurators to create and design characters really fast, which overall sped up um, sped up uh, the development time in the very little time that we had to um, to develop. And it's also um, kind of like HTML, JavaScript, and JSON based, so um, minor changes and tweaks can be made uh, through code as opposed to going back into the engine and redeploying. Uh, again, just a big, like any European project, and like most of our outputs, uh, the entire game is going to be localized. So the script will be translated into each partner's language. And also things like the characters, again, uh, images, sprites, and the names of um, special documents and locations will also be localized to each partner's uh, respective country. Uh, and then the way that we plan to distribute uh, the game is that um, you know we we want we want this game to be uh, played and integrated into the classroom by students and we want teachers to give it to students. So um, to do this uh, to do this uh, 
we decided to make the game available either uh, through online or else a downloadable version for um, Mac or PC. Um, or Mac and PC. So, um, and it, again, for accessibility purposes and for potential IT and technical issues uh, to prevent these, there is no installs needed, uh, there is no purchase required, and uh, there's no need for a Steam, an iOS, or an Android account. So um, that allows IT partners to install multiple iterations of the game on multiple devices, or else uh, students can play this uh, in the classroom or home on whichever device, device they want, uh, even as homework. And uh, finally, um, at the moment, we have, we have a quite a robust uh, version of, um, of an alpha at the moment. So if anybody would like to play and try it out, uh, you can email me at um, O'Kneely at CIT.ie if you'd like to play um, a demo of this game. And at the moment, it's available in uh, English as well as Spanish. Uh, in the next few weeks as well, we'll also um, plan to uh, produce a beta and release that if you want to wait till then. And again, that will have a very close to completed game, which will include um, we'll add the mechanics to level two, some music, and some more bespoke sprites, along with the Portuguese translation. And then as year goes on, every few weeks we'll be adding a uh, respective language. So um, finally, guys, uh, thanks everybody very much for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to me and watch this presentation. Uh, thank you to all the partners. Uh, such a pleasant experience so far working with them and, and continuing. And thanks to the TEL, um, the TEL uh, department members as well for the help on the project. Also, if anybody would like a copy of this presentation, uh, feel free to just email me or contact me in Old Space VR for uh, this slide. I'd be happy to share it. Uh, thank you very much.